Good morning and welcome to my morning rant. This morning we are going to do a study, a couple of um, podcasts I want to do on the will of God or the will of the Father because it is very important that you and I understand that everything that is being done uh, as far as what's happening on this earth has been, uh, the plans, the major plans have been orchestrated by the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. There were some plans before the foundation of the earth, and we've talked about that many times, um, wanted to lay that to you guys. And so the Bible tells us that um, the kingdom that you and I belong in is not shaken by any of this stuff that we see going on with all the different countries and lands and stuff like that. You see, much of it is shaken. But I want to encourage all of you guys that are uh, born again and those that are not because the Bible tells me that a lot of my brothers and sisters are still located within the kingdom of darkness and that is why we are told to preach the gospel to bring them into the kingdom of God but also as for those that are listening and reject that it would be judgment for those but we are told by our God to preach the gospel. And so this is one of the tenets of the gospel that I want to embark on in the next couple of uh, podcasts. And that is that you and I are called to live by and live from the will of God. In Matthew, turn with me to Matthew 6.10. It says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we know then that God has a will that is being uh, fulfilled in the heaven and the heavens, and also that uh, Jesus Christ said when we pray, he's teaching his disciples how to pray, that the will of the Father be done on the earth as it is also in the heavens. So the will of the Father is being dictated in the heaven. And it is also being dictated here on earth. So now Ephesians 5.17 states that, Wherever be you not unwise, but understanding what is the will or the, the will of the Lord is. So he's just saying, you know, you and I have a responsibility to understand what the will of the Lord is. And so... Uh, this is a very important piece in uh, that governs all of us. And uh, I remember Jesus making a statement about um, the will of uh, the Father and people who are in the kingdom of God. In fact, let's go there because it's really an important piece to look at. Matthew seven twenty one. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. So God is looking for people to do his will, and only those that do his will will have access, if you will, to heaven. And that is, I believe, that uh, we've talked about the principles of God. In the last episode, we talked about how God wants us to uh, do the impossible. And we have access to the kingdom of God uh, by these precious promises. We have access to um, God's um, uh, domain, his thoughts, his plans, and so forth, his agenda by faith and by the word of God. And so you and I have to be obedient to God's will for our life in order to fulfill what he has ordained in the heavens. And you and I must dictate and guide our life simply based on the Father's will. And so it is very important then that you and I need to find out what the will of the Father is concerning our life uh, and more so concerning how we behave here on this planet. Because remember, we have been extracted from one kingdom and we have been placed in the other. And so in the other kingdom, which is the kingdom of God, we are um, di directed that we ought to be doing the will of the Father. The same thing we, when we were in the will of the enemy um, in the kingdom of darkness, we were doing 
what he wanted us to do uh, through the flesh and being obedient to the flesh. So when we are in this new kingdom, we are governed or instructed that we ought to be doing the will of the Father. And so it's very important we need to find out what it is so that we can begin to um, appropriate it into our life, our lifestyle, our thinking, our thoughts, all of those things so that they can bear fruit. And because we see what was stated in Matthew chapter 7, 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. So there's, not, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be praying and calling themselves Christians or, um, you know, calling on God. And um, this is what he's saying. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord. So there's the people praying, man, in the name of God and, and so forth. But he said, not uh, all of them will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but are the ones who do the will of my Father who is in heaven. And that is very important for us to understand. And he tells us in Romans chapter 12, verses 2, that do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. So again, we are instructed here, according to Romans, that there is a mindset that is directed, uh, that dictates how we um, uh, do the will and understand and act on and all that stuff. So there's an understanding within oneself, uh, the thought patterns that we have to do. And so we, uh, that we are used to, especially when we are in the kingdom of darkness, we have certain thought patterns. And most of those thought patterns are governed by the spirit of fear. But when we are in the kingdom of God, the Bible tells us that our thought pattern ought to be governed by the spirit of love. We ought to then look from the lens of love, how I deal with others, how I deal with myself, and how I deal with my enemy, how I deal with everything through the prism of love, whereby in the last of the other kingdom that I was extracted from, I dealt through fear, which breeds hatefulness, resentfulness, anger, all of those things. And so you and I have a... Uh, process to be doing uh, should be happening to us when we are translated into this new kingdom because do not be conformed to this world, this world being this kingdom of darkness, uh, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. So we have to develop, if you will, new thought patterns by which we are going to be functioning within the kingdom of God. And those thought patterns we have to implement into our lives will help us to understand what the will of the God, of God is and then do it and appropriate it in our life, appropriate it in how we speak, appropriate it in how we behave. And once we begin to appropriate these new principles, we are then told that this is renewing, we are renewing our mind, we are going to begin to program ourselves differently so we can react differently. So let's take a look at First John chapter 2, verses 16 through 17, and see some of what that looks like when it talks about uh, renewing the mind. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and pride in possessions is not from the Father. So we are seeing now that uh, in this programming, the things that used to be, um, that used to drive us and cause us to act and think and behave, we are seeing what it looked like in that uh, kingdom that we were in. For all that is in this world or in the other kingdom is this, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, the pride in possessions. And this is not from the Father. So you're making a distinction. That type of behavior, that type of thinking is not from this Father that is in charge or over in the kingdom of God. But that 
um, if information that we just read is is from the father of that world, which is the father, Lucifer tells us that he is the father of that world, but is from the world. See, it is not from the father, but it is from the world. And how did it come from the world? That was the fruit of failure or rebellion um, as a result in the garden by our forefathers. And the world is passing away with its desires. So saying that this current state that we are all in, which is this world, this current state, um, is is passing away along with all of its desires and stuff like that. With desires, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, uh, the desires of pride and possession. And it says, but whosoever does the will of God abides forever. So there's a distinction. So the will of God we are called to do, and if we do the will of God, those abide forever. And so we see these two kingdoms. Uh, one has um, an end. It is passing away with its desires. And we see the birth of another, which says the one that will abides by the will of God, those, they will last forever. So let's go on and keep going and see what um, is not the will of God and what is the will of God. So look carefully then in Ephesians chapter uh, 5 verses 15 to 20 begins. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time or the best use of your time. You are 24 hours a day that you are given while you're here because the days are evil. Why? Because it tells us what that is all about, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride of possession and so forth. So we know that this world, this kingdom, is passing away and it is unwise but uh, uh, to, you know, to live in that fashion. But he instructs us, he says, look carefully then how you walk. Be very mindful. Be very thoughtful how you walk. Not as unwise as those kids in the dark in the um, in the other kingdom, but as wise, making the best use of your time because the days are evil. Therefore, because the days are evil, do not be foolish, but understand what is the will of the Lord is, and do not get drunk with wine. So we're getting some insights as to the beginning of what the will of the Lord looks like. Because it says that we ought to be uh, understanding, we ought to be wise and understand what the will of the Lord is. So now he begins to walk us through, if you will. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is the botcherer. But be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart or with your soul, as the Bible instructs us. So we got a glimpse as to see what it looks like as far as uh, the the will of God is. Number one, the Lord is that we don't get drunk with wine. So because it leads somewhere. And so we have to begin to watch how we drink and even how much. Because the scripture says, you, yeah, Paul talks to Timothy and says, take a little wine for your stomach. There was something going on with Brother Timothy. But the Bible also tells us not to get drunk with wine. And so you, because I know I, uh, we have a lot of, we used to call them when I would be in church all the, all the time, the sipping Christians, the ones that would be drinking um, uh, the communion, but they wanted to drink the real heavy stuff, if you know what I'm talking about. So we see then that uh, drinking or drunk, because it did say do not get drunk, and drunkenness, the scripture deals a lot with drunkenness, because drunkenness can uh, test or can lead into all kinds of issues. We know that um, when um, we look into the history of the Bible, there are stories about drunkenness and what happens a lot. And his kids, his daughters, they got him drunk, and each one of them slept with him and so forth. We know that um, Noah, uh, he got drunk, and um, 
uh, he, he, something happening there. And a lot of them, a lot of the church, Western Christianity, try to teach you all kinds of crazy stuff. But when he's, uh, he got drunk, it tells you that, um, that uh, something happened where he is nakedness. And if you look into the scriptures and see what it talks about, was that um, he slept, that uh, son of his slept with his mother. And that's what was that sin. And Canaan was born. And then the curse came on Canaan. But drunkenness can lead to all kinds of beha- behavior. And he says, or drunk, uh, drunk with wine, for that is debauchery. So it will lead you down into some crazy behavior, which will produce certain results in your life, which will then have all kinds of consequences tied up to it. So as we keep going, we'll see a little more insight. Ephesians chapter 1, 11, it says, In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who work all things according to the counsel of his will. So as we were talking about when we opened up in the podcast, I wanted to tell you guys that everything is done according to the will of God because he has some plans that ought to be fulfilled. And every man and every woman that is put into a leadership position is put there by God for a certain um, time period to produce a certain outcome. So all the crazy politicians that you see are in place in America today were placed there by God because the Bible tells us that our responsibility for the leaders is to pray for them. But he put them there. Why? Because the Bible tells us that God, the heart of the king is in the hand of God. And so God is the one that is navigating to gain and bring out his desire, his will on this earth. And it says that everything who, who God works all things according to the counsel of his will. He put all those crazy people in there because this is judgment time, because the people are crazy. And that's why their representative are a representative of what the people are in each area that they are. Every one of those areas that you've seen these people that voted into, into place, these sick individuals is because those people in that area are sick individuals and so they are then um, electing people that are just as sick as they are and as they are bringing them in place you see them supporting them over and over and over again because that area uh, that place or state or or whatever location they're from seat they're from their people in that area are very sick and they are a representative of who they are. That's the Bible. So let's take a look at Matthew chapter 26 verses 39. So that we see, and going a little further, he fell on his face and prayed saying, this is Jesus Christ, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, uh, not my will, but your will be done. So all of us have to come to that place that we, as children of God and representative of this new kingdom, we all have to come to that place because remember what Jesus said uh, in earlier in Matthew chapter seven twenty one. Now that everyone that says to me, Lord, 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 will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is born in heaven. So we see that even Jesus had to do the will and surrendered to the will of the Father, which is in heaven, even unto death. And so you and I will have to do the very same thing. And the Bible tells us that God loves us and he will protect us anyway. But he tells us in the scripture, um, in 1 Peter uh, 3.17, For if it is better to suffer for good doing, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. So, God got your back regardless. So the will of God has to be done on this planet. James 4, 15 puts it this way. And he says, for this is the will of God, that by doing good, you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. And so if 
these representative, these people in those um, representative where they have those sick people. If those people is a perfect mirror, if you will, if those people want to silence those ignorant, foolish representatives, then the people have to become enlightened for this is the will of God, that doing good, you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. So those people in those rep in those areas would have to start doing good. Start doing good has means that one must be responsible for your actions and uh, line up with don't be leaving lies and all of those different things the scripture teaches. So what we're going to do is uh, walk through Ephesians chapter um, 5 verses 6 through 20 and then we are just going to close it at that and we're going to continue this in, uh, look at the will of God because we want to see what it is and how we need to follow it so that we can get into the kingdom of God as Jesus dictated earlier in Matthew. So let's take a look at Ephesians chapter 5 uh, verses 6 and we see, Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of such things, God's wrath comes to those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be partners with them. <laughs> Let me read that again, guys. Let no man deceive you with empty words. I won, I won, I won. We won. False this. You know. Let no one uh, deceive you with empty words because there is a price for it. For because of such things, because you are deceived by empty words, or uh, uh, God's wrath will come on those who are disobedient, all of you, every single one of you. This is God's uh, word, not mine. Therefore, because of that, therefore, do not partner with them. For you were once darkness. Now, this is talking to the church, man. But now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, in all righteousness, and in all truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. That is the responsibility of the church. We need to expose all of these radical men and women that are calling themselves Christians and white nationalists, um, uh, all of these different terminologies that speaks to hatred and all of the things different from the Word of God. It continue, continues in verse 12. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret, but everything is exposed by the light, become visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. This is what is said. Wake up, you sleeper. Rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you, or the Messiah will shine on you. You know that Jewish Messiah that you guys apparently hate? That's the one that this is talking about, not the white Messiah. This is the Jewish Messiah. So be very careful then how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord will is. Do not drink, do not drunk, uh, get drunk with wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus. That is what God wants you guys to do. And on the end with John 6, 40, For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in Him shall have eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. The Bible says that the just shall live by faith. We walk by faith and not by 